my name is Vivi Norti from right across the street from KPMG, uh, CDO advisory practice. Uh, basically what I do, I digitize companies, enterprises from banking to manufacturing industries to a lot of other industry clients. And today I'll be covering intelligent automation and what enterprises should kind of consider when they are um, aiming towards successful digital transformation. So first I'll start with the basics. Um, I'll categorize uh, four classes for automation. Number one, with the small, very small uh, sailing boat is RPA. And a client reference would be kind of entering structured transformational um, data into administrative systems. So basically automating any mundane tasks that your people do not want to do. Basic, um, a lot of corporations obviously are doing that already. Even smaller corporations and, and scale-ups are doing that. Class number two, enhanced process automations. And now we're moving to a little bit more holistic view of automation. A client example would be using bots that are enabled with natural language, language processing, uh, which in this reference case would be text analytics um, to identify and escalate transactions. And then the third class that I want to highlight is cognitive automation. And with our example would be artificial intelligent engines that can use and recommend different um, plans for um, employees that had hurt themselves before. So they'll offer a treatment plan and a return to work plan for those employees based on their injuries. It's really cool. <coughs> and then class four is intelligent automation. And that would be a combination of multiple technologies and ways to automate different parts of the enterprise. So it's an end-to-end -end holistic way to digitize and automate different um, ways of working. And this boat right here in the picture, it's obviously steering. I'm not sure from this angle how, how good they are or bad they are at it, but the whole point is to identify and prioritize the right opportunities. So kind of going back to that pictures, picture, um, having the right plan, not doing anything too drastic, but also not do it, doing something so small and insignificant and in a siloed um, to specific task that it cannot be scaled. So um, it's really important to find the highest possible benefit and meet that with the highest possible strategic fit. We use this five level um, way to assess companies. Um, it kind of starts um, from a very, very low point um, where a lot of companies don't have any strategic plan. They don't have any of the involvement on the C-level. So the agenda for the POX is on the managers or below. And a lot of confusion, no kind of mutual understanding of where the company is being taken. And then on level three, which is another, like um, the midpoint, um, there's already successful pox. Um, something is already probably already in use. Um, maybe something is scalable, but it's, it's, it's a bit more based on luck than, than, uh, than um, success on, on a more principled basis based on the fact that the corporation has a plan. But where we take our clients is towards having the holistic view 
of what they're doing by having the business services delivery synced end to end and having uh, not only uh, those people who implement and do and develop, but also the managers and then the highest C-level executives uh, sharing the agenda for automating the enterprise. So there you have a full range, or if we're talking about boats, you'll have a full fleet of ships or technologies. And you have a really specific plan of how to execute, when to execute, and what to execute in order to meet your goals. And I gathered these six points for you to kind of take with you. Um, number one, you should recognize that the use of IA is transformative. So if you don't have new data sources, new operating models, architecture, and definitely the long-term plans, you might be in trouble. And at that point, you should call me and my colleagues. And number two, you should formulate a comprehensive approach to automating your service delivery model. Number three, you should compare the goods and the bads, so the value and then of, of kind of keeping something as it is, and then the value of, of transformation. Don't be blind and don't kind of ignore the bad or the good from either side, because without having the whole full view, you might run into problems later on. And you should consider the critical aspects. And I listed some of them here. It could be technology, your infrastructure, your IT stack, organizational structures, governance, people, and your culture. Because this automation brings a lot of changes, very disruptive changes for how your corporations are built and how they operate. So these uh, critical aspects might vary for some of you, but you should consider them all. Number five, think about the ways that you can disrupt your business from within and to protect your company. And number six, you should always design whatever you're implementing and kind of exploring with. You should always prioritize those projects that are able to scale because there's only a little bit of value in automating something that is a task that is completely separate from the rest of your organizational tasks and structures. And a big thing for number six is also having the C-level initiative in it. So someone needs to be a sponsor and someone needs to own it mentally for it to actually work. And I um, wrote down this quote, and the whole point of what I've tried to kind of tell you with this is that there's beautiful new technologies, beautiful new ways to use it, and you might hear something might work for a certain company, and even if you are in the same industry, might not go for you quite as nicely and vice versa. So have always a very certain understanding of um, what is the need for the transformation and how your organization is impacted by that transformation in order to reap the value from it. Thank you. <laughs>